Have you ever knit cables before? It's easier than you might think. And I've got the perfect first cable knit pattern for you. This super chunky cable knit ear warmer is an oldie but goodie pattern from my blog that has launched almost 150 projects on Ravelry. And I get happy little messages from people all the time saying that this was their first cable knit project and it gave them the confidence to try cables. I hope it'll do the same for you. So a brief overview. This headband is knit in super bulky weight yarn flat on US 13 9 mm needles. You don't have to use circulars, straight needles are fine, that's just what I have. You'll work a six row repeat until your piece is long enough to wrap around your head, and then we'll bind off and seam the ends together. It features this chunky center cable, and the twisted look of the knitted cable comes from literally twisting the stitches. To do this, you're going to need a cable needle. Many cable needles look like this, but anything that can hold three stitches will do a crochet hook, a stitch holder, a pen, anything at all. This specially designed cable needle with the notch here comes in handy, and when I demonstrate the cable, you'll see exactly how that works. To begin knitting this average adult sized ear warmer, cast on 14 stitches. Like I mentioned, this is a six row repeat starting on a wrong side row. Row one is to knit four, purl six, knit four. Row two, knit 14. So knit all the stitches. Then row three is a repeat of row one, knit four, purl six, knit four, and row four is a repeat of row two, knit all the stitches. Row five is one more wrong side row, knitting those four edge stitches with the six center purls. And row six is where all the cable action takes place. You'll knit the four edge stitches, Then the written instructions say to C3F, which stands for cable three front or forward. To do this, we'll slip three stitches off the left needle and onto our cable needle. See how the notch is keeping them extra secure? The front from cable three front indicates that we hold those stitches in the front of our work. If the pattern said CFB, for example, meaning cable three back, we'd put those stitches in the back. But we'll keep them in the front. So now we're going to knit the next three stitches. And knitting that first one a little bit tighter helps bridge that gap. Then cross those held stitches over by knitting the stitches off our cable needle. You can slip those stitches back onto your left needle to start knitting them, or knit them directly off the cable needle. Both ways work just fine. With the stitches knit, you can put the cable needle aside then knit the last four stitches. And 
everything we just did, putting the three on hold in front of our work, knitting the next three, and then knitting the held stitches. All those instructions are contained in that little abbreviation, C3F. So if you see cable instructions like that in other patterns, that's what it means, to cross three stitches in front of three stitches. So working across six stitches total. Cables aren't always written that way, but it is one standard way of writing cable instructions. And that is our six row repeat. We'll start again at row one, knit four, purl six, knit four. And when you're purling the back of that cable, it's just like purling any other row. You might see a gap or two, and that's okay. It'll close up a bit when you work more rows. I'll show you again what that cable row looks like once you've knit a few more rows. Here I am on another row six, and I've knit those first four stitches. Then I'll put the three on hold in the front of my work. Then knit the next three. And I like to tighten up that first one. And then I'll cross those held stitches over and knit them right off the cable needle. Then knit the last four stitches. I also wanted to talk about one of the trickiest parts of this pattern, which is keeping track of which row you're on. Is it a row four? Is it a row six? Is it time to cable? How do you know? Well, here's a quick way to count cable rows. You can take a needle and insert it under the last cable here. Kind of move the cable over, and you can see the space between stitches right here. If you stick your needle up under these ladders, you can count them, and they'll tell you which row you're on. So I have four ladders. That means this is a row four and not a row six. So I'll continue on and cable on the next right side row. Now I've knit about 21 inches total and it's time to bind off. In order for the cable pattern on either end to kind of match, be sure to bind off after a row five. So this would normally be a row six, but instead of cabling, I'm going to do a basic bind off. We'll knit one, knit the next one, and pass the first stitch over. Again, knit one, pass the first stitch over. Continue until you bound off all your stitches. Leave a long tail and cut your yarn. We'll use the tail to seam our edges together. Now you've got a few options when it comes to seaming. If you want just a straight seam, you can bring the ends together like this, with the cable facing out. And you can just seam the cast on and bind off edges together around and around for an easy but visible seam that still looks fine. But I'll also show you the seamless mattress stitch. The mattress stitch seam is worked under the stitch next to the cast on or bind off. See here? There's that little V-shaped stitch running perpendicular to the bind off. Just weave your needle under both legs of that stitch. Come to the other side and find that stitch. As you can see, this seam is a little slower, but it produces this perfectly seamless join. Personally, since I don't mind a seam in the back of a headband, I'm more inclined to just whip stitch around the cast on and bind off, since it's a little faster. But I'm going to unravel all that and show you a little different seam with a twist. For the twisted seam, 
you'll want the wrong side of your work facing out like this. Bring your ends together to meet and stagger them until the corner of one is centered with the other side. Then fold one side around into a little sandwich and fold the other side. Now we have this big hunk of knitting that we're going to seam all together. And it doesn't matter so much exactly where you put your needle since this seam will hide it well. Just make sure you're getting through all four edges with each pass. So bring the needle back around, work under one, two, three, and four sides. Work across the whole chunk And I'm just going to weave my end in a little bit here. And cut it. And watch what happens when you turn it right side in. A cute little twist. You can wear it in the front for a modern turban style headband or wear it in the back for a more classic cable knit ear warmer. Two looks in one. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this ear warmer pattern and intro into knitting cables. So do you have the cable bug yet? Let me know and I'll do more cable knitting videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.